Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy, happy Thursday, everyone. Can everyone hear me? And see the PowerPoint on the screen? You can't see? Can anyone see the PowerPoint? Okay, so let's get started for the day. Okay, so last class, what I did is, or what we did is we went through all seven of the nutrients, right? And we went in depth talking about the different types of vitamins. So today we're going to go in depth about talking about the different types of minerals. Okay, so we, just to give a quick um, review on minerals, we said last class that minerals help your body to grow, develop, and stay healthy. Minerals can be mined from the earth, meaning that they're naturally occurring elements, right? And there are several minerals such as calcium and sodium, which are needed in trace amounts, okay? Or which are needed in small amounts to do what we need them to do in our bodies. Some sources of minerals are eggs, salt, and liver. Again, I'm reminding people, please put your questions in the Q&A and please put your answers for me in the chat. So the first thing I want you to do, as always, take out your books, please. Head up. Today is the 23rd of, what is the month? April. Um, topic, we're still on nutrition. Still on nutrition. And our objectives for the day is to identify seven deficiency diseases. And I want you guys to be able to predict the effects of nutrient deficiencies by the end of this lesson. Please type done when you are done. Yes, you're going to use your school notebooks, as always. I can see, I can see your text, I can see your chat. We're good. Okay, so most of you are done. Okay, so I'm going to play this video. And like always, you want to pay attention, you want to listen, you want to um, pay attention to what you should look, listen, and all that good stuff. So at the end of this video, you know, I like to ask questions. I'm going to ask you one or two questions because you should know a little more or a lot more about minerals. You should know a lot of names of different types of minerals. Okay. And you should know some function of these different minerals because we know different minerals do different things. Okay. So here we go. Let us learn about minerals. Minerals, vitamins, and water are accessory food factors. They are sodium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. Certain other chemicals are required in slightly lower concentration for performing useful functions. These include iron, copper, zinc, cobalt, manganese, iodine, and fluorine. Larger portion of certain minerals are concerned with bodybuilding activities such as formation of bones and teeth, calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. Trace elements and other minerals are useful in physiological activities such as oxygen transport, that is of iron, hormone synthesis of iodine, and intermediary metabolism of manganese, copper, zinc. Some of the elements remain as constituents of the body fluids. Chlorine, sodium, and potassium presence of certain minerals is essential for neuromuscular irritability. Presence of magnesium, sodium and potassium. Blood clotting. Presence of calcium. Cardiac functions. Presence of potassium and calcium. OK, 
Okay, good. So just list off for me some of the minerals that you just heard about. Let's go. Just throw them out there. Throw them out there in the chat. Copper, good. Good, Sean. Michael, calcium, good. Phosphorus, very good, Michael. Rory, magnesium. Mm hmm. Kendrick, zinc, very good. Potassium, tomorrow, good, tomorrow. Alisa, zinc, very good. Iron, mm hmm. Michael, you can't on bad. Sodium, potassium. Okay, good. Chlorine, very good, very good. Now, he mentioned, the, or the video mentioned three types of minerals that he called bodybuilders, okay? So these are minerals that are needed for our bones and for our teeth, for us to have strong bones and strong, strong teeth. What were these? Who, who remembers what the three gave? Calcium was one. Yeah, Cedrico. Yes, very good. Yes, calcium. What else? Start with M. Oh, I see it. Magnesium. Uh huh. And what else? Last one. Phosphorus. Very good, DeAndre and Tazion. Tazion. Good. Awesome. Now he also mentioned some minerals that are constituents of the body or that stay in the fluid of the body. Who remembers one or two of these? Anybody? Okay, Zion, what do you think? Okay, so he did mention chlorine, potassium, and sodium. Okay, and he mentioned a mineral that is responsible, okay, or that aids in oxygen transport. Who remembers what that mineral is? Melissa, I think you would know who remembers what that mineral is that aids in oxygen transport. Very good. Very good, Melissa. Iron. Good. And the rest of you. Very good. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start our notes for the day. And I want you to put um, types of minerals as the heading, please. Underline it. Before you do this table, each table should have a heading. My mistake. Okay, so again, you're going to put this table, you're going to have three columns, types of minerals, uses, and sources. Where do we find them? Okay, so the first one will be just talked about iron. Okay, so the uses of iron. The human body uses iron to make the oxygen-carrying protein hemoglobin, which plays an important part in carrying oxygen around the body. Hemoglobin is found in the red blood cells. Iron is also needed to make up a part of many proteins in the body. So iron is a very, very important type of mineral. Iron is needed, again, to make the protein hemoglobin. And this protein is needed for the oxygen to attach itself to in order to be transported through the body okay in the red blood cells okay because we know it is our red blood cells sorry that transport this oxygen to all of our to all around our body to all of our organs so again iron a very important mineral sources are liver dried beans dried fruits eggs green veggies and ground nuts along with other types we're writing this down heading types of minerals Okay, next mineral is calcium. Okay, and I sh I'm sure a lot of you know why we need calcium. You learn this from young. Your parents tell you to make sure drink your milk to have strong bones and strong teeth. Calcium is also needed for growth, maintenance, and production of the human body. Proper levels of calcium over a lifetime can help prevent osteoporosis. Okay, an osteoporosis is just a condition in which the bones are fragile. Calcium helps with blood clotting also. Mm, we also saw that in the video. Good. Sources of calcium are wheat, oats, fish, and seafood. 
leafy green veggies, dairy products, beans, and peas. Phosphorus. So along with calcium, we have a mineral called phosphorus, which also helps in making the bone hard, okay? So it makes the hard material in bone. Ooh, what just happened? Okay, so it make again it makes the hard material in bone. Um, mainly found in dairy products and meat. Then we have potassium. Potassium keeps your muscle and nervous system working properly. Potassium helps to make sure that the amount of water is correct. So we can think of potassium as a regulator. It regulates the amount of water in our body, so it's very important. Commonly found in bananas, broccoli, tomatoes, potatoes, green veggies, and other fruits. Please type done when you're done. Okay. Okay, so in that same table, you're going to continue on. Uh, make the make the table longer, please. Extend it. So now we have a mineral called iodine. Okay, so iodine is needed in small quantities, but it forms an essential part of a molecule of thyroxine. Thyroxine is a hormone produced by the thyroid glands in the neck. Good. So we need iodine to produce a hormone called thyroxine, okay? And we know that our hormones are very important because they allow messages to be sent in our body. We also have sodium, and sodium controls heartbeat. Source of sodium is salt, okay? How many of you knew that? So anytime you see sodium on the back of a packet, think about salt, please. Think about how much salt you are consuming. Good. So we said that sodium controls our heartbeat. So what do you think would happen if we consume too much, too much sodium? What do you think would happen to our heartbeat? Would it increase our heartbeat? Would it decrease our heartbeat? Yes, it would beat fast. I see somebody mentioning blood pressure and all. Oh my God, y'all are so, y'all are doing so well. Yes. So if you take on too much sodium, if you consume too much sodium in your diet, it can indeed increase your heartbeat or increase your blood pressure. And the opposite happens if you consume too little sodium. And that happens sometimes also, sometimes also. So your heartbeat, is decreased and your blood pressure is decreased and, uh, and that can also be very serious just as how just how high blood pressure is serious low blood pressure is also serious so we don't want any of those to happen so it's important that we have a good amount of sodium or commonly known as salt in our diet awesome next we have a mineral called sulfur Sulfur helps hair and nails to grow. It's found in the body tissue and is essential in collagen creation, a protein that gives skin its structure. Sources include cabbage, cauliflower, and what is that? Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts and egg yolks. Good. So if sometimes if you look in the back of a nutrient supplement, especially those that say hair or nails, you know, they have those said that say hair or nails. Listen, if you all take this, it's going to make your hair flourish. It's going to make your nails long and strong. If you look in the back of those supplements, those nutrient supplements, more time than not, they have a good amount of sulfur in them. Next, we have chloride. And chloride helps the body to digest the food we eat because it is an essential component of the juices in the stomach and intestine. So chloride is naturally found in our digestive system and it helps the food to digest. Commonly found in salt, soy sauce, milk, eggs, and meat. Okay, and when you're done, I have a quick question for you. 
So please type done. Okay, so question. If we don't consume enough of these nutrients, or if our body doesn't use the, these nutrients that we consume the way that it should, what do you think can happen? Or can something happen? Do we just go on living as normal? Do we get sick? Is there an effect? Our body will be weak. Okay, you can die. Okay, interesting. High risk of death. Okay, I like that one. Okay, a lot of y'all go into the fatal route. Okay. Okay, Stefan, I don't know about deadly chemicals or, or food poisoning, but like most of the others said, not having enough of these nutrients of these types of minerals, and before that, we know we went over types of vitamins and, uh, and in general types of nutrients, right? When these aren't consumed the way they should be, or as much as they should be, or used the way they should be, we can have types of disorders or types of diseases that result. Good. Okay, so let's look at what we call these types of diseases. Okay, so these are called deficiency diseases. These are diseases such as rickets or scurvy that is caused by a dietary deficiency of a specific nutrient, especially a vitamin or mineral. This disease may stem from insufficient in intake, digestion, absorption, or utilization of a nutri nutrient. So deficiency diseases are diseases that occur because we do not take in the amount of nutrient that we should take or our body does not digest or absorb the nutrient or even more than that, we digest and absorb the nutrient but our body doesn't use it the way that it should. Okay? And like it says, most often than not, the nutrient that we're talking about is either a vitamin, and we remember our vitamins from last class, our vitamin A, our vitamin B, our vitamin E, our vitamin Z, our vitamin K, our vitamin C. We remember all of our good vitamins and what they're used for. So more often than not, it's because we don't take in those vitamins the way that we should or the amount that we should, or we don't take in those minerals in the amount that we should. So diseases that are caused by insufficient intake or use of a nutrient are called deficiency diseases. Okay? We are deficient in that type of nutrient. Okay, so we should be done with that. So, the types of deficiency diseases. Okay, so the first disease, and like always, this is the topic of the, of the, um, what topic? What am I saying? What am I saying, guys? This is the title of the table. Types of deficiency diseases underlined. Okay, and then diseases, causes, symptom. Should be symptoms. So put an S at the end. So the first disease that we have is called rickets. Okay, and rickets is caused by a lack, OF, not OD, a lack of calcium or OR, not OF, I don't know what's going on there, a lack of calcium or vitamin D, my apologies, and the symptoms of rickets are soft and brittle bones, skeletal, skeletal sorry, deformities like bow legs, okay, so persons with this type of disease, which is again caused by a lack of calcium or a lack of vitamin D, usually have very soft and brittle bones, okay? Their bones are very weak. And they more commonly have bow legs, right? So their knees are spread apart, okay? Which is abnormal, okay? It's a deformity. Next, we have a disease called scurvy. And scurvy is caused by the lack of vitamin C. The symptoms of scurvy include sores and swelling in the gum. And like many of you said, many of you so drastically, just out of nowhere said that some of these diseases can cause that and scurvy is indeed one of them. 
In fact, historically, scurvy has, has caused many deaths, okay? Especially in the time when they didn't understand why this was occurring, okay? They didn't understand that you needed certain types of vitamins to survive, okay? So when they weren't taking in their citrus fruits that contain this vitamin C, they weren't taking in their veg vegetables that contain this vitamin C, persons were dying. Okay? And it's a it's a it's an interesting it's something interesting to research, so I would encourage you to research it. We also have anemia. And anemia is caused because of the lack of iron. Okay? So not enough hemoglobin in red blood cells for oxygen transport. These are the symptoms. Shortness of breath, tire easily, and you have muscle, muscle pains. So we know that we need iron. Iron is very important in order to make the protein hemoglobin. So when we don't take in enough iron, we can't make this protein hemoglobin in the way that we should or in the amount that we should. And so oxygen isn't allowed to be transported around the body in the way we need it to be. Okay, anemia. Now, you, have, you may also have heard of a disease called sickle cell anemia. Now, this is a different type of disorder. It's not a deficiency disease because, again, we know deficiency disease are caused by a lack of a nutrient. Okay, so sickle cell anemia, similar, similar because... It also results in hemoglobin not being able to transport oxygen around the body. Okay, but, but that one is caused because the red blood cell is shaped in a form that it shouldn't be. But this type of anemia, just called anemia, just anemia, so don't get it confused, is caused by a lack of iron. It is a deficiency disease. Night blindness, yes. Some people find it very extremely difficult to see in the night more than others, okay? So night blindness is caused by a lack of vitamin A. And this goes back to what we talked about last class. We talked about vitamin A and how vitamin A is important to sight. So when you don't have enough vitamin A in your diet, it can lead to night blindness. Okay, so symptom, loss of sight in the night. Okay, next we have beriberi. And beriberi is caused by a lack of vitamin B1. Symptoms include problems to the nervous system or to the nerves, muscle, muscle weakness, and pain. Next, we have Cauchy or right? This is caused by a lack, OF, my bad, by a lack of protein in the diet. So symptoms include a large stomach from a large liver, swollen ankles and feet, and slowed mental development. This, like another um, disease that we just mentioned, scurvy, can cause death, okay? It can cause organ failure and it can lead to death. Next, we have goitea or, you know, our behemoths, we like to put a spear on it. Goit caused by a lack of iodine. Okay. And we know that we mentioned that iodine is very important for the production of a hormone, tyroxine. So symptoms include enlarged thyroid gland in the throat and difficulty swallowing and breathing. So we know that when this thyroid gland, which is found in the throat, is enlarged, you know, the throat becomes swollen, it can press upon those tubes that are needed for us to swallow and that are needed for us to breathe. So persons usually have difficulty swallowing and difficulty breathing. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's see how much we remember. Now, I have some pictures 
Oh, what is that spelling? What is, okay, deficient, guess the deficiency disease. Please correct that spelling. Okay, so I have some pictures. And I want you to guess the, I want you to guess the disease. Okay, so the first picture is a picture. It's a comparison picture, right? So, <laughs> you're so quick. Okay, <laughs> it's a comparison picture. So the first picture is someone who can see um, rather normally in the nighttime. And then the second picture is someone who, who is struggling a little bit. Night blindness. Okay, good, 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 good. So what, what causes night blindness? What is night blindness caused by? Lack of vitamin A. Lack of vitamin A. Don't put A. Lack of vitamin A. Very good. Now, right under that picture, right under that picture, you can see that this person's neck is, you know what? I'm not even going to say. You guys can see what's happening. So tell me what's going on there in the picture with the person's neck. What's going on? Mm -mm, no, no. Not lack of vitamin A. What's the disease called? I see some of you have it. I want one or two more of you to get it. Yes, goiter, okay? Or quite, goiter, okay? And goiter is caused by a lack of iodine. So when there is a lack of iodine, the thyroid gland in the throat enlarges and it swells the throat area. That's what, that's what's happening in that picture. So the picture with the persons, you can see the persons. Well, again, I'm not going to say anything, okay? But you can see inside the person's mouth. What is that disease called? What do you think it's happening? It's happening there. Very good, very good. Scurvy, scurvy, right? Because we can we know the symptoms of scurvy, and we know that in scurvy. The gums are swollen. Good. And what is scurvy caused by? A lack. Very good, Michael. A lack, and Ricardo, a lack of vitamin C. Right. A lack of vitamin C. Okay. Under that picture, what's happening with that picture? What's happening with the with the two with the two children? Look at their stomach area. And tell me, tell me what disease, tell me what disease that might be. No, ma, y'all just write this down. Let's go. Their, their, their stomach is swollen. So we can, so, okay, we can take all the, okay. Uh, y'all need some more time? Y'all need some more time to go over your table? Well, we say the symptom is, an, uh, is a swollen, you can see a swollen stomach. It's there, I promise. What is yes, but what is the name? I see somebody having with the deficient the um the deficient the nutrient deficiency, but what is the name of the disease? Okay, let's go, let's go back. Everybody see? Quashio core. Very good, very good, awesome. Okay, caused by a lack of protein. Good. You have some more photos. What, what's going on in the first one? Now, this is a little tricky one, but I won't say anything because you should know the difference. The, the two photos right there, the first one, the second one, they, they might get you a little. Oh, you all got it. I see somebody saying bow legs. Okay. What is bow legs a symptom of? What disease? Rickets. Very good, rickets. And we know that rickets is caused by a deficiency in vitamin... I don't what? What, 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 what? what vitamin? Vitamin D and what else? And, and what mineral? Calcium. Very good. Awesome sauce. Okay, so the, so the second one, if that's rickets, then what is this one? So this person is having problems standing. Look like their muscles are very weak. What's going on there? Rory. <laughs> I see the answer. Okay. Very, very good. Good. 
okay and what what is the um nutrient that berry brandy the person with berry brandy lack what's going on there lack of vitamin b no i won't i i, I won't exactly take that answer like lack of vitamin what exactly need the correct answer you're close miss Adelie. kendrick and rory fix that everybody fix that let's go lack of vitamin what lack of vitamin b1 please remember b1 okay specifically remember we said that there are a number of b vitamins so you have to be specific when you give that answer good and the last one we can guess what it is this person is having looks like she's having a problems breathing she having a shortness of breath mm -hmm. and what do we call that what is that a symptom of what disease anemia very good anemia caused by a lack of what what mineral thank you Lashanti. a lack of iron awesome job and that is it for the day um i'll see you all on on monday um for those of you again who are asking who said that you didn't get um specific slides specific notes even from a few classes ago you can go on the site go on your grade click on the recordings you see something say the recordings for science click on the recordings and you can watch the recordings back again you can take down the notes if need be some of you said that you have a textbook which has the notes please make sure that it's this specific notes um again i should be checking back on you about your about your assignments okay so you have a next class so i will see you on monday have a great weekend stay inside stay safe all of that good stuff r-e-s-p-e-c-t find out what it means to me this week's religious studies lesson will be about respect What does a prefect, a nurse, a police officer, a pastor, parents, and a grandparent or the elderly have to do with respect? Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Our objectives for this lesson include, one, define the term respect and list four people you can show respect to. Two, explain three ways to demonstrate respect to someone. And three, analyze the story of David and King Saul to identify how David demonstrated respect for King Saul. The big question is, what is respect? The Oxford Dictionary defines respect as due regard for the feelings wishes or rights of others or as a feeling of admiration for someone or something as a result of their abilities qualities or achievements the web displays who or what we can show respect to we can show respect to an environment we can show respect to money. We can show respect to time. We can show respect to other people's property. We can show respect to buildings. We can show respect to ourselves. We can show respect to animals. We can show respect to people. This week, we will focus on how to show respect to people. Do you remember the slide with the photos of a prefect, a nurse, a police officer, a pastor, parents, and a grandparent or the elderly? 
These are all examples of people we can show respect to. Maybe you can think of some more people we can show respect to. I challenge you to create a list of other people you can think of. Take a look at the sign. What does it mean to you? Respect must be demonstrated or shown. When we give respect to others, then we are respected by others. Respect is a two-way street. To have respect for authority is to honor or submit to those in leadership positions. Consider the photo of the prefect, a leader within a school organization. Consider the photo of the nurse, a leader within a healthcare system. Consider the photo of a police officer, a leader within a government system. Consider the photo of the pastor, a leader within a religious organization. Consider the photo with the parents, leaders within a home. Consider the photo of the grandparent or the elderly, a leader within the community. When we don't show respect to others, we are being disrespectful. Here are seven ways to show respect. R. Respond. Respond using good manners. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Please and thank you. E. Engage. Engage others in activities. Do not leave anyone out. S. Speak. Speak to others in love, remembering that we all have feelings. P. Protect. Protect the vulnerable, babies and elderly, by giving them assistance when needed. E. Emulate. Emulate respect so that others will follow. C. Choose. Choose your actions carefully to not hurt others' feelings. T. Treat. Treat others with kindness no matter if they are younger or older than you. Can you think of other ways you can show respect? Listen to this Bible story, Hide and Seek. As you are listening, think of this focus question. How does David demonstrate respect to King Saul? David and his men moved from one hideout to another. Someone always gave news of his whereabouts to Saul and the king and his soldiers would chase after them. While David was lying low in dry desert country, Saul and his men surrounded him. An urgent message arrived in the nick of time, warning the king of a Philistine attack. Saul and his men hurried away and David was saved. David and his men moved to the hills. They were pitted with caves in which they could hide. A spring of fresh water gushed in the ravine below. It was hard for Saul and his fully armed soldiers to move up and down the hillsides as nimbly as David and his fellow lightly armed men. One day, David and his men crouched at the back of a deep cave where they were camping. They could hear Saul's men coming near. Saul himself stepped inside the entrance of the cave. The bright sunlight concealed the shapes of the men hidden in the darkness beyond. Kill him, whispered David's followers, but David shook his head. When the king was not looking, David crept noiselessly forward and cut off part of Saul's long robe with his sword. Then he withdrew quickly into the shadows. Saul left the cave, unaware of what had happened. 
On a sudden impulse, David raced after him. Your majesty, he called after the retreating figure of the king. Saul turned in astonishment and David bowed low. You must believe that I do not want to harm you, David pleaded. I could have killed you just now if I had wished. Look, he held up the piece of Saul's robe. Saul was ashamed and tears rolled down his cheeks. I have wronged you, he admitted. One day I know you will be king. Be kind to my family when that time comes. Saul went sadly home. David knew that in spite of his tears, Saul's feelings towards him had not really changed. The chase would soon begin all over again. Let's review the Bible story. Who are the characters in the story? In the story, we have Saul and his soldiers and David and his men. What is happening in the story? Saul and his soldiers are trying to kill David and his men. How does David show respect to King Saul? Instead of listening to his friend who wanted David to kill King Saul when he had the chance, David decided not to. When King Saul left the cave, David shouted out to him and showed him the piece of the robe he was able to cut off without King Saul knowing. David's respect for King Saul as a leader causes David to spare King Saul's life. Let's conclude this lesson. Respect is defined as the due regard for the feelings, wishes, or rights of others. Respect is also a feeling of admiration for someone or something as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. There are many people we can show respect to. Some examples include a prefect, nurses, a police officer, a pastor, parents, and the elderly. Respect must be demonstrated or shown. There are many different ways to show respect. Here are seven. Respond using good manners. Yes, ma'am, no ma'am, please, and thank you. Engage others in activities. Do not leave anyone out. Speak to others in love, remembering that we all have feelings. Protect the vulnerable, babies and elderly by giving them assistance when needed. Emulate respect so that others will follow. Choose your actions carefully to not hurt others' feelings. Treat others with kindness, no matter if they are younger or older than you. When respect is not demonstrated, then we are being disrespectful. Respect is seen in the Bible story, Hide and Seek, with King Saul and David. David demonstrated respect for King Saul as a leader by sparing his life. David showed respect for King Saul's life even though King Saul wasn't showing respect for David's life. David shows us how we must respect those in authority.